Hey, this is Boran Dulos with the Creative Egg Podcast, where we discuss the God-given passion, pain, and purpose for the creative individual. Hello and welcome to the Creative Egg Podcast. I'm your host, Boren, and I'm a multi-instrumentalist, singer, songwriter, and composer, as well as a musical intercessor at the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, Missouri. I have several music albums under varying artists and genres available wherever you stream music. With this podcast, it's my desire to encourage and exhort artistic people to faithfully steward their God-given creative ache. This week is going to be a bit of a different kind of episode. Currently, I am actually on vocal rest to try to recover from some vocal nodules, which as a singer is pretty important. So for this week's episode, I'm going to share with you a clip that comes from a podcast episode I recorded on a friend's podcast earlier this year. My friend Lazaro Cruz interviewed myself and my wife about stewarding creativity for God on his podcast called The Bible Walk Podcast. There's a lot in this podcast about how God views our creativity, how we can properly steward it, and a bit of my personal history on this journey of being faithful with the creativity that God has given me responsibility over. If you'd like to hear the rest of this episode, as well as other episodes where my friend Lazaro interviews other believers on various topics, check out the Bible Walk podcast. It's available wherever you're streaming this one now. So with that, I'm going to go back to resting my voice, and I hope that you enjoy and benefit from the discussion that we have in the episode that you are about to hear. Let's jump right in, guys. The title says Faithfully Stewarding Creativity, but born like you and me were talking about yesterday, man, there's there's a bunch of layers to that. So first question right out of the gate, creativity, talent, is that all from God? Is there some genetic stuff happening there? <laughs> like, where does that come from? What, what are your beliefs about that, guys? And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah. So first of all, uh, thanks for having us. It's, uh, you know, we've known you for over 10 years and it's a joy seeing what the father's doing through you and your family. And we're excited to join you on the Bible Walk podcast. Um, Creativity. Is it all from God? I think that in itself is a multi-layered question, but creativity itself, I would say, is from God. It yeah. originates in God. And to to kind of pull a little context in, when God created everything in the beginning, Genesis 1 and 2, he then created man in his own image and in his own likeness. And so I believe that creativity is innately part of the nature of God. Mm. And we have been given that God nature, creativity. Yeah, It definitely is like many things. It's subject to the person who's wielding it, right? Like mm. we all have different tools at our disposal. I mean, even just our hands and our feet. And we can use yeah. those things to glorify God. We can use those things for selfish ambition. But creativity itself is, I believe, it is from the Father and it is for the Father. I completely agree. I do believe that it, it does come from God fully. And what we do with that, you know, that's what we are going to be accountable for. But it is meant to glorify him and bring him praise. Well, let's let's kind of that's kind of rolling into the next thing. OK, we're talking about where it comes from. Right. Let's talk about purpose. Why, why God gave us creativity, talent and not only purpose, who is it benefiting? For, for whose benefit? Is this a all God thing? Is this other people, ourselves? Let's jump into that. I do feel like the purpose is, like I said, to glorify God. Like it's an evidence that he exists and it just shows who his character is and that sort of thing. But along with that, I do think it's also for us as individuals. I know even a part of my life, for me, it was helpful for me because there had been several years where I kind of shut that down my creativity uh, uh, in, in regards to music and even art. And then when I 
truly gave my life to the Lord, I was having this hunger and this desire to connect with God in a way that I'm designed to connect with, which is through creativity and through art. And so I do feel like it is for us as well as a way of expression. And once I, you know, dabbled into that, I was like, wow, like I didn't realize how much of the father I can encounter through this. So I think it's for God. I think it's for us, but I also think it's for others who surround us mm-hmm. as um, encouragement, edification, affirmation, you know, things like that. Going back to the beginning of Genesis, I think we find a principle that creativity is inherently relational. God creates something out of nothing, right? He is the creator. And what his intentions were was to share this realm of creation Mm -hmm. with man and not just to share it, but after God creates Adam, he invites Adam to name the animals that God had made. And that is an inherently creative process to take something that I'm seeing and to have my own interpretive spin on the identity of what this is. That's a creative act in and of itself. And so creation is inherently relational in the sense that not only does God want us to enjoy his creation, Mm. but he wants us to interact with him creatively in the realm that we exist in. God being creator, there's an awe, there's a wonder when we see things that can't be created by man that cause us to give him glory and be inspired But then again, there's us partnering in creation, using our creative abilities and talents to fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. And then there's also, uh, if you look at Esther 4.14, which we may get into more later, but that's when Esther is in the position where she can actually speak to the king to save the Jewish people from genocide. Her voice was uniquely created for that moment. Mordecai, her uncle, tells her to lift up her voice because she was put into the kingdom for such a time as that. Mm. And so using her voice, which is a creative expression, not only is it to see God and be in wonder, and not only is it to also partake in fellowship with God, but it's also to minister to those Mm. around us. And again, in that extreme sense of Esther, unto their own salvation. So I think creativity is inherently relational. Now that you're, you guys are talking, I, I just have a question that came to mind that probably people are wondering, and even myself, I want your take on it. What would be, what would you guys define the difference between creativity and a talent? I would say creativity is something we all have. Creativity mm-hmm. is a nature of being human. Right. Again, because we're created in the image of God, we're different than all other animals. They have a function right? Mm. Like they do things that they're created to do and and that's all they can do. But we, we can paint, we can sing, we can write movie scripts. Something as simple as putting together a dinner with four different ingredients. I mean, you make mac and cheese, you throw some salt and pepper in there. That's all going to still be a creative process because it's based on your interpretation of what is an enjoyable experience. And so creativity is, it's innate to our being. Whereas a talent, I would say, is more or less a unique function or strength that an individual might have to a degree that is different than those around them. We, we would all, I'd say, have pretty clear differentiating talents. And so right. that's what I think the difference would be in a nutshell, just off the cuff thinking about it. I hadn't thought about that question before, but yeah. that's what I would say is creativity is an innate part of who we are. Yeah. Whereas a talent is having a more expressive strength, so to speak. And I, yeah, I agree. Talent, something to good at, like, like me, I'm not a talented artist drawing wise. I, I, I suck at drawing. Right. <laughs> and it's not something that I can't do. I just struggle. Literally. It doesn't come easy to me. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's why I want to do it. Like I, it doesn't come easy. Now, can I learn and can I get better? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Now creativity on the other hand, whether you're like, like I agree with you guys, whether you have the talent or not, creativity can come and go at different times. Mm-hmm. Right? You mm-hmm. can be boring one time and then really low on another. And there's all this stuff. And I think like Warren, you said, everyone has creativity. I agree. 
but it's not a constant level of creativity at all times. And I know that you guys, as as artists, uh, not only singing but drawing or whatnot, I know that creativity comes comes and goes, right? What have you guys? What do you guys do when you struggle with creativity? What not only what you do, but how do you feel? Like mm-hmm. if it's if we're looking at this from a God sense, right? We look at this from a biblical sense, from a God given thing. If God gave us creativity, God gave us talent, or getting to a point where we're really struggling with creativity, what are your responses to that? Have been, are now, what have you done? Anything you're thinking about? Actually, you're smiling, so something's. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so I know for me, and you know, this is the new year, so this is even an opportunity for me to challenge myself, but. Um, I mean, my creativity falls in the realm of drawing, painting, and also uh, music, writing songs and things like that. And like you said, it it comes and goes. I'll have this like, oh, I'm inspired. And then now I'm like completely not, you know. And so to answer your question that is at hand, my originally in the past um, and not that long ago, <laughs> last year, um, my response is honestly, you know, on the, on the negative note would be to kind of shut down mm-hmm. because I would feel this like, I would, I would have this desire to be creative and to express, you know, w- what's on my heart, but it just seemed quite bigger than me. And so it would honestly overwhelm me to where I would just be like, I would just kind of, I would just just be stagnant. Mm. And the desire was never, you know, met, like this desire that I was having was never satisfied, you know. However, with listening to other artists and things like that, and what I am challenging myself on for this new year is to, to, to do even to be who you are to do even whenever the motivation is not there, or the inspiration, we should say, you know, to still write that song, to still, you know, create whatever that is that, you know, is in the realm of things that you're in. And so for me, how that would practically look is setting a time aside in your schedule and like committing that to creativity and just start somewhere, you know, and always complete, you know, what you started on. And Mm -hmm. even though you can pick it apart and be like, oh, this could have been better, this whatever, whatever, you know, stay committed to finishing whatever you started and then move on to the next and review, you know, review your process, um, you know, from there. So that's kind of what I am actually challenging myself on in this coming year. So. Cool. Good morning. Yeah. Well, I'll preface by saying we have a natural propensity to, to think of creativity or art in a certain framework or a certain series of things and you know, painting and dancing and music, but creativity is really innovation in a sense. And that could be anything from like, like what you're doing with a podcast. Like this mm. is you thinking creatively, like Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, there's something in you that burns as an assignment. And now you're tasked with the responsibility right. of creating content that answers the questions that you think are in the world. Mm. That's a creative process. People bringing goods and services to the marketplace. Look at the packaging of food. Mm. Food grows, you know, we eat a bunch of plants that grow from the ground and yet we package them in things that are creative, right? Right. So creativity, we all use it. Um, And so when I'm struggling with creativity, uh, or I'd say that kind of inspiration, right, which happens a lot. I've been in seasons where I've got work in the morning, but I'm up till three, four, five a.m. because I can't stop writing this song, and it's and that'll go on for weeks because my songs tend to be pretty detailed with a lot of instrumentation, and so it's like it, it could take me two and a half years to write one song, depending on how intense it is, and mm. uh, so I've gone through seasons where I'm burning the candle at both ends, but I've also gone years where I'm like not really doing anything creative Mm. and it's really i i i think ashley really touched on it a lot of it is just a matter of being diligent about it i found that the most creative stuff usually actually comes with persistence as Mm. opposed to inspiration Mm. if i wait for inspiration then i'm you know what are the odds that not only am i going to feel something 
but mm. then I'm also going to be able to do that thing, right? Like most of my creative stuff comes in as far as inspiration goes, comes when I'm doing long road trips. I'm like mm. driving for hours and it's just hitting my brain. And I'm like, if only I could just be in my workspace right now, I would hash out my next biggest idea. But I'm in the middle of Kansas, in the middle of nowhere. But then maybe eight hours later, let's say I'm home and it's not much time has passed, but that inspiration, I might even remember the ideas, but I don't feel the ambition to do it. Mm. And I mean, never. A lot of times I've I've hit the audio record button to record a melody or an idea that I had. And it ends up, I find it later, like years later, like, oh my gosh, I this was completely gone from my memory bank. I didn't even remember that I had this inspired, you know, moment. And so I, again, I found that I'm more fruitful creatively with persistence as opposed to inspiration. The inspirational waves will come. But if I have time set aside and I'm diligent about guarding that time, and even if I don't feel anything, I I just start chugging away at whatever I do know that I have, maybe a framework that I've built for a song. And I don't have anything to go off. I just start, you know. I found that that usually ends up getting me in this place where I'm more inspired and ideas are coming out. And I I cover a lot more ground that way where I look back after the fact and I'm just, I'm really surprised with myself at how much came out of me, particularly because I didn't start out that day with any inspiration. Which I just want to add one more thing. Yeah. I just, I think that including <clears throat> the father in, you know, in that process, yeah. um, because I know for me, I feel like I'm kind of split where I, I do have creativity running through me, but I'm also a very like checklist a type personality as well. And that has been a challenge in my life where I, I do have this side that is, you know, wants to create and spontaneous, but I also have the side that is like, mm. you know, like checklist and a type and all that. So with that being said, for me, I have to remind myself to include the father in the process and not look at it as a to-do list thing, but look at it, at it as a time for expression, a time with the father, you know, and um, partnership. Yeah. Fellowship. Partnership. Yeah. Fellowship, fellowship is what I thought, you know, yeah. fellowship time with the, with the father. We've been talking about the positive. Let's talk about the negative side of stuff, right? Let's talk, because the title is Faithfully Stewarding yep. Creativity. What does it look like to not steward it correctly? What is your own experience with that, if there's a history there? Or mm -hmm. what has been, what have you seen in others? What are you afraid of happening? Let's, let's mm -hmm. unpack that. In that parable, the parable of the talents, the master, he goes out and he leaves three of his servants with sets of talents. He gives one of his servants five talents. He gives another servant two talents, and he gives his third servant one talent. And the first two, the ones who had five and two talents, they doubled what they had by the time the master had come back. And they were rewarded to a degree that doesn't at all actually seem related to the, the money or the talents themselves, mm. right? Enter into the joy of your master. They both were given that honor. Mm. And that, uh, I think that that reflects the way that the father deals with us, right? Because mm. I might be really talented at music and you might not be. You have other talents that I'm not maybe as talented in, but even so, it, it's not a matter of how talented we are in a certain area. Because the master gave them the amount of talents based on their ability, is what the scripture says. Right. But he did not uh, reward them according to their ability. He rewarded them according to their faithfulness with it. Wow, yeah. So then the final servant who had the one talent, he buries his talent in the ground. And, and he does say, he says to the master, I was afraid and I knew that you are shrewd, you're harsh, you reap where you do not sow. And so I hid the talent in the ground. I buried it in the ground so that when you came back, you can have what you left me. Now, there's a human aspect of that that, that can seem sensible, right? 
there's wisdom from heaven and there's worldly wisdom, but oftentimes they kind of look the same. And yeah. one might think like, well, you know, you protected what the master gave you, but the master uh, had a clear expectation and the, and the servant knew that. He said, you reap where you do not. So you, you came expecting that I'm going to give you more than, than you gave me to, to steward. And so he says, I was afraid and I buried it. But the master replies, not saying you were afraid, but he says, actually, you were wicked and lazy. And I don't think he's saying you weren't afraid. I think he's saying your fear blinded you to the reality of the nature that you cultivated, which is wickedness. You're you're out for yourself. You have evil intentions in your heart, which is to protect yourself, to guard yourself, to keep yourself safe. And you're lazy. You weren't willing to actually put in the work Mm. that you knew I was requiring of you. It would be hard work. I'm coming to reap what I did not sow. Mm. And of course, we know with Jesus, all the work that we do is actually by his grace anyway. But the parable is very important because it shows us that he is expectant that we will take what we've been given and that we will multiply it. When he came back and and he said, you're wicked and lazy, he took from that servant the one talent that he was given. He said, take from him that talent and give Mm -hmm. it to the one who had more and cast that one out into outer darkness. I think that in the realm of creativity, talking about faithfulness, This is a fantastic parable to bring awareness and understanding of our responsibility as creative individuals in the eyes of God who gave us all that we have and is going to come back ready to collect. And I think it's also noteworthy when the servant buried the talent, it says specifically buried the talent in the ground. And if you remember, Mm. uh, we're made of two parts in Genesis, the breath of God and the ground mm. literally adam the, the the word adam means from the ground yeah so i think it's it's a poetic implication there that the servant buried within himself he held back his potential mm. his creative ability to produce yeah. more fruit he buried it within himself uh in the ground so to speak and that was seen as a wicked act by the master So creativity, I believe the way that we need to see it is as a matter of faithfulness to God. As our master, he's very gracious. He's very kind. He literally sent his perfect son to die on the cross that people like you and me, who Mm. I'll speak for myself, there's nothing in me that deserved even a blink from Jesus, but Mm. he gave his life for me. And now he's giving me grace to not just have like this righteous life, but to also function as a creative person to produce artistic essence into the atmosphere that pleases God, benefits our fellowship and touches other people. This is an amazing thing, but it's something that he requires of us. I hope that you enjoyed this clip from the Bible Walk podcast. And if you'd like to hear more, again, check out the Bible Walk podcast wherever you're listening to this one now. And please subscribe to the Creative Ache podcast to continue to hear these episodes as I release them. Also, follow me on Instagram at Borendulos Music so we can keep up with each other on this journey of being faithful with our God-given creativity. Thank you again for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode.